Welcome to the Teleprompter App Tutorial. This tutorial will teach you everything you need to know on how to use this app. Be sure to watch the tutorial until the very end so that you understand the full range of the app's features. You can watch this tutorial as many times as you need by clicking this button. Enjoy! The Teleprompter app converts your Windows 10 device into a fully-fledged teleprompter. The moving script is easy on the eyes, fully adjustable, and is designed to minimize eye movement. Using it, you can produce high-quality videos in which you appear as an expert on some topic. Your viewers will assume that you are speaking spontaneously, while making eye contact with them. This is a great app for making presentation videos or establishing a presence on YouTube. As you can see, there are three tabs in the top row. You can think of each tab as a main step of the video production process, that you sequentially progress through. The rest of this video tutorial consists of four sections. Each section will deal with a tab, while the last section will cover the speech recognition feature found under the first tab, which is a topic in itself. The Enter Script tab provides three options for entering the content that will be rolling down the script box. Click the From File sub-tab to import a text or PDF file saved under a folder in your PC. After selecting the file, Click the Save button to save it in the app. If you now click the Adjust and Record tab, you will see this content rolling down the script box, which would not be happening if Save had not been clicked. But this is getting a bit ahead, so we will return to the Enter Script tab. To make changes in this content, click the vertical bar near the right edge. This exposes a writable editor that allows you to use the keyboard to make corrections. You do not have to click save again, after making the corrections. The From Voice sub-tab lets you import content that you generate with your voice using the app's advanced speech recognizer. To learn how to use this option, skip about 10 minutes before the end of the video. The From Web URL option allows you to paste the internet address of an article from your blog. Clicking this button extracts the content. To import the content into the app, once again, you need to click the Save button. As with before, to make changes to this content, click the vertical bar near the right edge to expose the writable editor which lets you make corrections. Once content is saved, it is transferred to the script box under the Adjust and Record tab. Think of the user interface under this tab as your recording studio. It is a little more sophisticated than it looks, however, after you watch through the second section, things should be straightforward. This is the script box. As you can see, it can be moved to any location within the app window. To move it somewhere else, simply click your mouse on it and move your mouse to that area, then release the mouse. Consider moving the app as close as possible to the front facing camera, and the script box as close to the top of the app window. Your viewers will assume that you are making eye contact with them. To restart the script from the beginning, double click on the script box. To pause the scrolling, click once. Clicking a second time causes the scrolling to restart. You can vary the rate of the scrolling through this vertical slider. As you can see, the scrolling rate can be varied from painfully slow to too fast to read. Consider leaving it to a faster mark, then pausing and resuming when necessary, with single mouse clicks. This can be helpful when you want to insert comments that are not in the script. But if you want to be completely hands-free during recording, you can find the ideal mark on the scroll slider and leave it there. Most user settings, including this one, are saved when the app is shut down and become the default settings when the app is restarted. This is the opacity slider that lets you control the visibility of the script box. You can adjust the height and width of the script box through the respective sliders near the lower right corner. 
The various font properties of the script can be modified by clicking the button to the left of the video tutorial button. Clicking on the horizontal bar near the top of the screen exposes the camera panel. Expanding the camera panel hides the script box, and brings it back into view when the camera panel is collapsed. From inside the camera panel you can configure various settings of the preview and video output. The camera selector is a drop-down menu that lists all the video capture devices found in your Windows 10 device. You will probably be doing most of your videos using the front-facing camera, so be sure to select that one. The preview switch lets you turn preview on or off. You can change the preview mode by double-clicking on the preview area. Preview mode does not affect the output video in any way, so the output video will look the same, no matter which of the four preview modes happens to be active. Preview has to be set to on before being able to click recording button, otherwise, the recording button is disabled. The resolution selector is another drop-down menu that lists the video resolutions that the selected camera is capable of. A higher resolution will produce better quality videos. Consider using a resolution of 1280 by 780 if you want your videos to fit neatly into the area defined by YouTube, and not show black borders. The recording selector lists various formats that are available for whichever resolution was selected earlier. Each item in the drop-down shows the encoding type, aspect ratio, and frame rate. A higher frame rate will produce better quality videos but also be more taxing on the system. However, this is not a problem for modern systems. This button lets you apply a stabilization effect to your video. Stabilization basically centers the video around your head, so if you tilt your head left and right as you talk, it will look stable in the video, with the background moving clockwise and counterclockwise. This is not apparent during preview, but it will become apparent in the video that you produce. It's a neat but not necessary effect. The microphone selector lists all the audio capture devices that were detected in your Windows 10 device. Consider investing in a sensitive USB microphone, suitable for podcasting and speech recognition software, if you haven't done so already. Once you plug it in and it shows in the drop-down menu, select it before doing your recording. Next, select the save directory, where you want your video files to be saved. The last feature of the camera panel is the recording delay text box. Type a digit representing the number of seconds you want your recording to start after. This is to let you mentally prepare just before the recording. Now, it is time to collapse the camera panel. Doing so, as mentioned earlier, brings the script box back into view. You can now click the recording button and wait for the countdown timer to reach zero, at which point you can begin reading. Whenever you want to take a break, click the pause button. This pauses not only the recording but also the script. The last frame of the recording is overlaid at reduced opacity over the preview. This is to let you align your outline with the last frame, so that the viewers will see continuity. Click the pause button again to resume the recording and scrolling. To end the video, click the recording button when it is in flashing slash recording mode. The video will be saved under the folder selected earlier. Let's go and confirm. As you can see, the date and time are part of the name, so all video files have a unique name. The next video segment, will explain the video editor, under tab 3. The user interface under the Finish tab features a simple yet powerful video editor. With the convenience of dragging and dropping, you can enrich the videos produced in the earlier step with images, audio files, and overlay thumbnails, and give them a professional look. First, let's drag and drop a video object onto the blue timeline. Let's assign to it, an introductory countdown video clip. Next. Let's drag and drop an image object, and assign to it an image. Let's give the image clip a duration of 4 seconds. Let's drag and drop another video object onto the blue timeline, and assign to it a random clip. 
Now, let's drag and drop an audio object onto the orange timeline, and assign to it an audio file. If the total duration of the audio files in the orange timeline is less than the total duration of the video and image clips in the blue timeline, the audio files will loop so that the visual content will be accompanied with music. To delete an object from the timeline, simply right-click on the object. To clear all timelines, click the clear button, and click yes, but we won't do this right now. Finally, let's overlay thumbnail images near most corners of the video. For example, let's place a company logo thumbnail image inside the bottom left corner. Let's place a message thumbnail image inside the top left corner. And let's place a puppy thumbnail image inside the top right corner. It is best if the resolutions of the multimedia files in the blue timeline to match. For example, if one video has a resolution of 1280 by 720, all other videos and images should have the same resolution. Now, let's click the preview button to see the result through the apps onboard media player. The resulting video, or composition, can be saved as an MP4, AVI or WMV video file, and then uploaded to a video platform, such as YouTube. To open and play the composition, click the open and play button, select the file, and click the play button on the media player. To return to the timelines view, click any button that is highlighted in blue. As was shown, with the video editor of the teleprompter app, it is easy, fast, and fun, to create attractive and compelling videos. In this segment of the video tutorial, I am going to illustrate how the speech recognition component of the teleprompter app works. Use this component whenever you prefer to generate the content that will become your script using your voice. Before beginning a dictation session, ensure that the correct language is selected by clicking this button. This drop-down menu lists all the language packs that have been installed in your Windows 10 system, and that support speech recognition. Let's go ahead and generate some content. To do this, I am going to click the Dictate button. Smoking damages your health full stop. Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time full stop. Jazz is the best musical genre in the world exclamation mark. 51 is greater than 27 ellipsis. Today it's Thursday, comma, August 11th of 2019, comma, isn't it question mark? Now, comma, I am going to end dictation full stop. Although the text came out perfectly well this time, Speech recognition is not perfect and mistakes do occur. You have two ways to make corrections. One is by using a class of voice commands, referred to as actions. With action voice commands, you can make changes in your content without using your mouse and keyboard. To access actions, click this button. A flyout menu will pop into view with the list of all the action voice commands. As you can see, they are organized under blue letter category titles, for convenience. There are voice commands for selection, editing, formatting and punctuation, and there is a voice command that allows you to spell words. Now let's see some of the actions at work. Once again, I am going to click the Dictate button. Select Dictation. Capitalize Speech Recognition. Select First Sentence. Next one. Smoking damages your health, comma, and Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time! Exclamation mark. Select Last Sentence. Previous Previous 
round bracket. Select isn't it? Left 2. Right 1. Exclamation mark. Delete last sentence. And now comma I am going to end the dictation session full stop. In the dictation session just finished, I used the action voice commands of select, capitalize, select first sentence, next, select last sentence, previous, round bracket, left, right and delete last sentence. To learn more about an action, click on the button with the eye icon, to the right of its name. This will display a tool tip with helpful information on how to use an action, and what it does. Also, hovering over an action causes a secondary flyout menu to pop into view to the right of the primary menu. This secondary menu lists voice commands associated with the action, and allows you to add your own. For example, if you find that when you use the previous action, the app prints the word envious, you can assign the word envious to the previous action. Simply hover over the previous action, type the word into the text box and click save. Envious has now become a voice command for the previous action. This way, next time you say previous but the app mistakenly hears envious, it will do what you intended it to. But you will still be able to use the word envious within the context of a sentence. Let's see. Select last word. Envious previous envious envious. Unselect. Select 51 is greater than 27 ellipsis. Left 1. Right 1. It is not good to be envious full stop. And if you ever want to remove a voice command from an action, Simply click the delete button to the right of the voice command. If you try to delete the main voice command, you will get an error message. But you can change the action itself. For example, if instead of select you would rather say choose, simply type choose in this text field. The new name must be at least three characters long, or the change will not take effect. Now you can go back and delete the old main voice command. Also, the new main voice command will have been added automatically, which once again, you will not be able to delete. Using actions is fun. Feel free to play and experiment with them, and you will be surprised with how helpful they are when you are generating content for your script using your voice. The other class of voice commands is hotkeys. To access hotkeys, click the button the right of the actions button, and the hotkeys flyout menu will pop into view. Like its actions counterpart, it too has a secondary flyout menu for voice commands. Unlike actions, here you can add an entire hotkey. A hotkey is an easy to pronounce word or phrase that you associate with text that is difficult to pronounce. For example, if you want to do a video about a place with an impossible name to pronounce, click the add hotkey button, give it a convenient voice command, such as place in New Zealand, type that name under long text, and click save. From now on, every time you say the phrase place in New Zealand, the actual name will print. Let's test. Select everything. Delete. This video will be a review of place in New Zealand full stop. OK. Earlier it was mentioned that there are two ways to make corrections. The voice commands, or what was being covered up until now, is one of them. 
The second way is by clicking this vertical bar near the right edge, to expose a writable editor. Here you can use the mouse and keyboard to make modifications, as in all standard editors. As with the other two options, under the Enter Script tab, you need to click the Save button to transfer the content generated to the script box, under Tab 2. This has been a lengthy tutorial, but it was necessary to cover the actions and hotkeys of the speech recognition component. Although not all of the actions were demonstrated during this tutorial, learning how to use the rest of the actions should be straightforward as they are well documented. Thank you for watching.